So good evening, Patrick. Um, it's very, very nice to see you here online and thank you for your valuable time for this interview. Um, well, I'm Crystal, Crystal Schneider uh, from the Camelot Project. And uh, could you say, introduce yourself briefly and say a little about your professional background? All right, I'm Patrick de Boer and I teach mathematics at a secondary school in the, in the Netherlands. Um, it's my ninth year of education of teaching and I'm going to start with this year. So I've been around for some time and I um, have been working at a bilingual school, school for pretty much all that time. Uh, I'm a biling bilingual student myself as well, so I've been th going through the course for six years um, learning English by doing really and by uh, applying it in different subjects and I also um, chief editor of CLIL magazine which is an international magazine about bilingual education and um, as CLIL is a bit of my expertise now I also give workshops and speak on conferences about it and that's how I got in com to contact with the Camelot project. Ah, oh, okay, that sounds really interesting. And uh, so, which subject you said it's mathematics? And yes. Other subjects as well, or? No, I just teach yeah. mathematics. Mm -hmm. And and you do that in English, right? Yeah. Well, and... at the school that I currently work on, because I switch schools over summer, the schools I currently work on, I only teach two classes in English and three in Dutch. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I still teach it in uh, in English as well. Yeah. And and which level um, do you teach in? I mean, um, the English you teach, which level is that? You mean in, uh, concerning the European framework? Yeah, because for example. That, that, yeah, ooh, that yeah. would be a bit hard to... Uh, I start with 13 year old who come yeah. from primary school and have barely any English background at all. So okay. I start really low level um, mm -hmm. and that's the first year. Okay. And I assume they know nothing. So until the, the first eight weeks of the, the school year, I speak both English and Dutch with them. And mm -hmm. after that, I switch to English only. And after Christmas, they are not allowed to speak Dutch as well. Okay. And that works. They can handle that. It's, it's go, always going really fast. And so, I also teach uh, third grade this year who are two years older. So they um, are going to do their Cambridge uh, advanced exams at the end of this year or um, mm -hmm. first certificate if they... Okay. Uh, uh, if they can handle that and um, they also sometimes do checkpoints I don't know if you know that uh, Cambridge checkpoints actually yeah so then yeah. you have an idea of the level there right I'm not quite sure how you should you know put that into the framework of the European uh, yeah but that's language pretty, but then you have clear. a general idea yeah. of what the absolutely. level is absolutely absolutely yeah uh-huh and um, well which technology or online platforms do you use in your classes if any um, well, technology really again at my new school. I've just been I just started at my new school for about two weeks, so I'm still getting to know the possibilities there. But for okay. example, last year um, I used a few websites, and and all we really had was a projector, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I couldn't really go into smart board uh, era things. We we couldn't do that at my new school. Um, what I did used a lot was movies from YouTube. And for example, the Camelot project that we did was also a movie that was created for us that I used, mm -hmm. but also um, more interactive websites like uh, Socrative, okay. Kahoot. Okay. Um, and for example, what I use a lot now is Class Dojo, which is an, uh, a website that helps you keep track of the progress of your students concerning oh, okay. uh, homework and, 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 mm -hmm. and in my case also motivating them to speak English. Mm -hmm. So I use mm -hmm. and then I walk around with my iPad and, and I just randomly give them points and they really like it because they you know like to get more points if they want to even third graders mm -hmm, so that's, mm -hmm. that's the technology that I use right now apart from obviously um, homework online and everything but that's something that every teacher does I think okay and and do your students also use iPads in the classroom or no, no. they can bring their own device if they want to and some yeah. I will encourage that in the near future but uh, we're not in any, in any way a tablet based school or an iPad school so uh, Oh, okay. Just have paper books. I do have my books on my iPad because it's an, something that is supported by the publisher. Mm -hmm. But um, no, the school itself is just a paper-based school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not like the newly created uh, job, Steve Jobs schools or something, right? No. I just found that 
Uh, so I read something about that in the internet. Yeah, that sounds well. Yeah, it's about twenty of those schools right now in the Netherlands, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Twenty-ish. Yeah, sounds great. I'm um, not sure about that. <laughs> well, I don't you, know if it's a good thing, but it's okay if they want to try that. Of course, they should just give yeah. it a go. And then I've been they I believe they've been doing it for about two years now. Yeah. So they, yeah. they will probably get results soon. I just I read that about two months ago. Um, mm -hmm. There was they were they were going to launch a research to see if it actually worked. So the the results will probably be around in about half a year or something. That will be mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, that will be really interesting. Mm -hmm. Because so far it's all been about really speculation and ideas and thinking it would work. And now that they have launched, they can do research. They can actually see if it works. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Mm -hmm. You mentioned videos that you're uh, using videos, YouTube vi videos, and mm -hmm. you had one video made for uh, your classroom for yeah. teaching. Um, have you ever made videos yourself uh, you use in the classroom? No, no, not, no. not the way that I use. I, I sometimes um, edit videos and just, you know, but, but I've never really created videos for explanation. No. Uh -huh. Maybe a screencast every now and then, but not really uh, like what we did now with three dimensional objects because it would really cost me a lot of time to do that because I don't know how to do that. Okay, and could you explore a little um, about the, um, the the video you used that had been created for you and how your students um, liked it, you know, sure. so... Yeah, um, I used it for the, the Pythagoras theorem, mm -hmm. um, which is obviously something that most people know from still from maths, and it's used a lot in two-dimensional shapes. But it's also something that can be used in three-dimensional shapes. And that step from going from 2D, 2D to 3D mm -hmm. is sometimes hard for students because they can't really imagine show it anymore because I cannot really, you know, create a three-dimensional blackboard or something and cut through that. So the, the movie that our, uh, was created really showed how that two-dimensional figure that we knew fit into the three-dimensional uh, shape, uh, for example, a cube or a cuboid. And that mm -hmm. really showed my students um, how the things they already knew, their prior knowledge, fit into the new three-dimensional area. And I, after the video, I checked if they uh, understood. And I even had a control group, another cl class who didn't have the video, and the students who had seen the video and had done the worksheet belonging to the video actually scored better. Than oh, really? The yeah. Group who had not seen the video and just had my uh, regular explanation. So that shows that the video did help, I think, although it's, of course, just one class. So it's not yeah. like it's, so but that's, it's probably not the best way of researching things. But, it, you know, it showed me that it actually helps. And I will probably use part of that movie again or maybe the whole movie again this year. Yeah. Will, will you have other movies developed for you? At this moment, I've not been working on that. No, it's, we, we were focused on the Camelot project first. And it was also because... Um, uh, Tom Kunrad wanted to have some uh, videos developed and for his for the and before a certain date, mm -hmm. um, and then I switched schools. So the contract was with my old school. Oh, okay, I see. And I'm not quite okay. sure if he's still. Uh, it might be that he's still working together with one or two more colleagues at that school. At uh -huh. that school, but at my current job, I have not made new contacts yet. So I'm not sure if we're gonna, you know, work with Camelot again. It could be, but I've just not been discussing that with yeah uh, yet. but I mean it would be a good idea if you say uh, that it uh, kind of uh, motivates students and the results are better that you could you know get into that even outside Camelot you know yeah indeed yeah. I, I, I could absolutely do that right now I'm focusing on you know learning my colleagues names and, and students names yeah, and stuff. <laughs> yeah. but yeah, uh, yeah as, as when I work a little bit longer at this at this school at this job, I will be able to, uh, yeah, come up with some ideas of my own and ex showing them from my experience how things work and maybe get them motivated enough to together work on some things and create more videos. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you any uh, or can you foresee any technical problems? I mean, um, in showing videos or is that no problem or don't you know yet? No, uh, no problem. I, I, the school that I work at right now is actually more advanced concerning digitalization than it, my previous school was so that's not going to be a problem I can always show movies I want to yeah yeah and um, 
Have you ever been involved in any uh, 3D uh, worlds like Second Life or Virtual Worlds? Mm, I believe I tried Second Life once when it just came out, but I've never really done anything with it. So, no, not really. Mm -hmm. So it does not trigger much interest. Do you know about Well, I, I am interested in... in I, there was a time that I was really into creating 3D animations and, and those type of things. So I like, you know, working with computers and I do like the whole idea of it. And um, But I just never really delved into it. So it's not that I'm not motivated to learn about it. It's just that yeah. I've done other things. Um, but yeah, the, the, the whole concept of meeting people online or communicating through a 3D world seems interesting enough. I've just never done it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and what about gaming? I mean, games, uh, is that uh, an interest of your students? Or my or... students, yes, definitely. Yeah, I mean, that might be, I, I know a physics teacher who uses a uh, world of Minecraft and he uses that to explain uh, physical phenomena and uh, uh, that is quite interesting and he does that with his students and yeah, uh, that, yeah. so there is great potential do you see that or, yeah yeah, yeah. There, I, I it's not like I know an example immediately right now but I yeah. do see that there are possibilities there and mm -hmm. uh, just like with the video I I could you know provide an idea of I'd like this to be explained and then I just gave it to Tom and he said well I know someone who will probably be able to build this mm-hmm so and then the video came back and it looked really good already. We just had a few, you know, um, remarks and it was finished. And I really had a product that I liked a lot. So um, and that didn't require any knowledge about 3D worlds from my side. So mm -hmm. that that way of working I liked a lot. But for me to really implement it in my own lessons live, I have to first learn a bit more about those mm -hmm. uh, worlds. So and I'm not quite sure what's possible then or not. So yeah. I just have to. Maybe hear some ideas from other colleagues to say, well, I used this part of the game or this part of a website or this part mm -hmm. of a digital world to explain that topic. And then I'm OK, okay I don't mm -hmm. mind figuring it out and, and trying it, but I need to be a bit more specific than just, you know, try some software and good luck. Yeah. Because that would just take too much time. Yeah, that's right. And... um what about the uh, lesson plan? Uh, did you create that, or did uh, was that along? Uh, did that come along with the um, video? I did create the lesson plan myself, um, but I did. You know, um, there was a framework of Camelot that Ton asked me to fill out. So there were some details there um, concerning exactly what the video should be about, and also concerning the lesson plan, what exactly I was going to do with it. Yeah, um, but the whole lesson itself, the, the the way I planned it and what I wanted to do and everything, that's something that I did myself. The uh -huh. same with the worksheet, by the way. The worksheet that was accompanying the video um, was also, you know, some there were some questions before we watched the movie, then during the movie, then after the movie, and because yeah. it was bilingual education, I also had to focus on language a little. So that's that whole uh, part, I, that that whole worksheet I created myself as well. Wow. Well. Yeah, I, I must have a look at it again. I saw it, um, you know, I saw the video and I thought, ooh, uh, that's uh, quite a, a different video from uh, the language ones we use so far. And, uh, yeah, it's yeah. mathematical. Yeah, absolutely. Patrick, actually, um, I have asked all the questions I had okay. to ask. Uh, if there is anything you would like to know, I'm happy to answer questions as well but well, what, what what is the direction of Camelot project right now so we Tom and I um, hosted a workshop uh, in, in on a conference uh, some months ago and I was just wondering what's what's the next step now or what's going to be the final or the, the next follow-up part of the Camelot project are there going to be any new videos or is it going to be something that there's going to be new around or something I'm not quite sure what the structure of the whole project is is just my, is my question clear or not um, at the moment, I mean, we, we have been doing a lot of field testing in different areas. And, um, of course, this Quill, Quill course was part of the field testing. And there were others, uh, language courses in different areas um, from our partner, uh, in our partner countries. And uh, at the moment, we are evaluating uh, all these um, uh, feedbacks from 
these uh, courses and I'm interviewing and I'm evaluating the interviews and we also had uh, two teacher training courses which um, facilitated language teachers and also CLIL teachers to make their own machinima and uh, so at the moment uh, I'm also writing reports and uh, evaluate them and um, yeah we hope to uh, follow to have follow-ups with uh, more um, teachers who are interested in actually creating their own machinima and we also use them for different purposes you know for um, have students in world or um, you know use them as you used your uh, format um, as ready-made uh, machinima or the teachers create their own machinima and so uh, as I said I'm just in the middle of the evaluation phase at the moment thank you very very much thank you and have a good rest of the evening I will thank you bye bye, bye, -bye.